We are back talking syphilis here this morning. And I know, like Denver said earlier, it is sometimes uncomfortable uh, to talk about certain things, but these conversations need to be have. Now, syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection uh, that can cause, you know, serious health problems, you know, without treatment. So infection develops in stages. There's a primary, there's a secondary, there's a latent, and there's a tertiary uh, a stage. Now, to enlighten us more and give us more details here, we've got general practitioner in studio, that is Dr. Cornelia Fun. A very good morning, Doctor. How are you? I am very well, and good morning to you. Good morning to NBC, and good morning to the audience in Namibia. Right, Doc. I think, you know, let's get straight into this conversation, you know, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, syphilis. And we're saying usually it's transmitted through sexual contact. Mm -hmm. But are there other ways that it can be transmitted? Yes, there are three ways that it can be transmitted, although sexually uh, uh, sexual transmission is a major way. The second way is skin-to-skin -skin contact. And the third is from mother to baby. And this can happen during pregnancy. It can happen during childbirth, which is labor. And it can happen during breastfeeding. And it's unfortunate that we say mother, and it looks as if we are blaming the mother. Mm -hmm. But if men were getting pregnant, maybe we will also use the word father. Mm. But at the end of the day, the infection was established through man and woman, sexual intercourse, mm. but it is a woman that carries the pregnancy, mm. and therefore we say mother. The child. Correct. Thank you so much for that, Doc. Let's talk about the first signs that we should be looking out for, and I particularly want to say, what are the first signs to look out for for both men and woman? Good question. As you rightly introduced, mm -hmm. it has three stages, the primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary can be initial stage. Okay. So what is that first sign? A reddish rash. A reddish rash, or papule as we may want to call it. Okay. But it doesn't take long, this rash will convert to an ulcer. And so the person might not even have picked the rash, but might also see the ulcer maybe when they begin to focus on their genitalia. Interestingly, people get scared looking at what they were born with naturally. Yes. So it comes with that rash, which soon converts to a painless ulcer hmm. and has a reddish appearance. It can be on the, what we got, what we call the gland penis, mm -hmm. or it can be on the vulva of the vagina. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, treatment. Let's talk treatment. You know, mm -hmm. obviously if this isn't treated, it can have, you know, um, long-term uh, um, you can, effects, you know, apparently it can affect the organs as well, you know. Yes. What do, how do we treat it? Good. A syphilis untreated is a very serious disease and we shouldn't take it lightly. Mm. Untreated, it can affect the heart, it can affect the brain. Untreated in pregnancy, that infant will be born and can die. Mm. If the infant does not die immediately, they can come with a lot of presentation like rashes and all that. So we need to treat. And if the child grows with syphilis, they can come up with blindness and deafness. That's very serious. Mm. So it can be treated and is curable. What is the treatment of choice for syphilis? Penicillin. Oh. But because we are talking to the public, please, this is not an over-the-counter medication. Bye. You must have a prescription by a doctor. And by the way, all ulcers on the genitalia are not syphilis. Therefore, if somebody feels like this must be a sexually transmitted infection, go to the nearest health practitioner, nearest doctor, your doctor or nearest doctor, mm. and then mm. get assessment yeah. with a result. And then treatment can be instituted. Still staying on the subject of treatment, Doc. If it gets treated, I think, you know, maybe I probably want to know this morning, um, are there chances of it returning? A very good question. That episode can be treated and cured, but 
there is no immunity. Mm. You don't develop immunity against reinfection. That is why certain preventive measures and lifestyle measures need to be taken by the individual or by people to just make sure that they don't get exposed mm. and or infected. Yeah, I wanted to talk about those lifestyle <laughs> measures actually, you know, in terms of how can it be prevented? Yes, so there is no vaccine. Mm. against syphilis, but basic be, be, because it's sexually transmitted and from there to baby, ne? Mm. So, and it is adults that have sex. Yeah. So we want to start with abstinence. Mm. And everything I'm going to mention, it doesn't mean that everybody will abstain because mm -hmm. otherwise there wouldn't be human beings yep. on earth. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So abstinence is helpful. Mm. Using condoms is helpful. Avoiding having multiple partners. It's, I don't see what is a pride in that. You know, mm. we need to do all of that. Mm. And if you are informed that you're infected, inform your partner. Probably he or she is still okay, but inform the person they can do screening. And then going forward, you may want to introduce, um, you know, condom into your sexual. Mm -hmm. um, activities yeah. you know mm -hmm. and then safe sex means a lot of things people can do condom leg sex if both of them are clean mm. and faithful mm. and faithful. both of them and that faithful. is what i mean mm. yeah they don't have the disease they don't go outside of the two of them then that is great mm. but anybody that is uh, you know playing around you need to still think of that partner. You know, I want people to have this thing of, what is love? Mm. Love is not aggressive. Mm. Yeah. And if there's love, it has to come with protection. Protecting that person, person yeah. that you love by disclosure. Mm. But I mean, it's so rare that somebody's going to disclose it, eh? Doc, like, you know, that the, the boldness of sitting down and, I mean, honesty is, is definitely the best policy, but I mean, how rare is it for somebody to say, oh, but um, dear partner of mine, this is, you know, the current situation? Yeah, but that's why we're encouraging people to be, um, love also has to do with honesty. Mm. That's why I'm saying, if I really say I love you, should I be hiding anything? <laughs> question, question, question mark. Yes, definitely, Doctor. As we wrap up this uh, very um, serious and informative conversation, Doc, yes. what would be your last words to Namibians pertaining to this um, uh, um, sexually transmitted disease? Okay, so I want us to live here knowing that syphilis can be symptomatic or asymptomatic. asymptomatic. And both ways is dangerous. The asymptomatic is because it's latent, mm. okay? So what I want people to do, that we should be self-conscious, health conscious, mm. and you can go and screen yeah. only for syphilis, or you can ask for a total body screen, including syphilis. Yeah. Then if it shows that you are incubating or there is syphilis already and you didn't know, we treat it. Treat it, yeah. Yeah. And when we treat it, and like I said, in a sexual relationship, if both partners are clean, then there should not be fear. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Doc, it was so nice having you in. Thank you. Thank you for so addressing much. this conversation the way Thank you just you. did. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Namibia, there you have it. Uh, we're having an interesting conversation here with general practitioner, Dr. Cornelia Defania. We're talking syphilis this morning, and uh, it's really easy. If you've listened to this conversation, you know, if there are any signs, don't be, don't be ashamed. Go for screening ASAP, because we've also heard if it goes untreated, it can have lifelong, um, you know, impacts. Like it could affect the brain, it could affect, you know, the heart and an infant. Let's think about those little things as well, okay? We'll be back after the break talking sinus.